Hi, my name is Taryn Joyce from Joyce Architects. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present this project to you today. Um, this project is located in Geelong, um, in the central business district of Geelong, 140 Moorable Street. Uh, it's a rapidly changing, uh, very quickly uh, being developed um, Geelong. It's uh, experiencing quite a lot of growth. Uh, my clients purchased a property on Moorable Street, uh, 140, shown red here. Uh, the context is quite a busy um, two streets of Moorable Street heading down towards the water uh, and Ryrie Street running east-west. Um, Moorable Street experiences quite a lot of heavy bus traffic and car traffic, uh, but it is a retail strip. It's just become a little bit um, unfriendly to pedestrian use in this, in this zone here and this zone here. And then Briar Street, which has a lot of uh, heavy truck use and is quite, quite a busy road itself. So this project um, is located here. My clients were interested in buying a property in order to attract a tenant uh, to the area. Um, the little Mellop Street here is the, that's changed quite a bit over the last seven to eight years, which is the hospitality precinct. It's got a lot of restaurants and bars and small businesses as well, like uh, a small single sole practitioner accountants or small legal firms that support, um, have supported lunchtime activity around here. But now the, uh, the trend seems to be a lot of people are coming to this area at night and other times of the day as well uh, to take part in the hospitality offering. So the location of the, um, the site itself is one of the first properties that extends towards the west in Shorts Place South. And the client was quite interested and supportive of uh, ideas we're exploring of changing the pedestrian access or primary pedestrian access for their tenant to be in this location here rather than on Murrable Street. So this is uh, some photos, some on-site construction shots, um, just showing this is Little Mallet Street crossing here and I'm standing in Shorts Place North looking across Little Mallet down the laneway. So you can see it's a fairly undeveloped uh, lane context with the frontages on the west, which are the rear of the other Murrable Street retail outlets that supports rear access and not, um, not primary pedestrian access. And then some of these properties are, um, are actually empty. This one's empty and a couple down further are empty at the rear. Otherwise they're taken up by the building owners supporting that front retail use. This one's an Airbnb. Then on the other side, we have a couple of other vacant, uh, currently vacant buildings and then small offices and uh, office share uh, further towards the end of the lane. Uh, the council are actually, um, uh, participating with the community here to repave the entire laneway and remove car access so that the, the whole lane will be on the same grade as Little Mallop. Um, so part of the challenge was to design something that uh, satisfied its current condition in the context, but also within the next 12 months be able to be easily um, worked into the changing ground level and work to um, their, the council's redevelopment of this lane, which is um, quite an exciting prospect. Uh, this is the ground floor plan. Uh, my role or our role, uh, we were engaged to uh, do facade works at the rear and the tenant partway through purchasing the client had secured a tenant and it had a pre-existing relationship with a, a franchise with fairly strict franchise relationship or controls over materials and and planning and a separate team completed the interior of this area. So we were um, charged with creating a facade that um, not just helped their current tenants needs and hopefully just quite some time they would have a successful relationship together, but also in the future, um, be able to address um, future tenants needs that they were unsure of. So this uh, point here is the small north facing um, zone and one of the things we we saw or the con conceptual driver here was in looking at the lane condition we saw the idea of a glowing tunnel or a cave at ground level as an idea to draw you down the laneway and be able to see the entry point immediately from far away 
and then utilise the rest of the visible um, corner as a glowing lantern or beacon also to draw you down the laneway. So this is the entry condition. It's the universal access ramp, but it's also the primary entry for everybody. Uh, and as you enter here, you come up the ramp and then there's a fixed glazing um, connection back to the street behind you. But you turn and then you enter into the, into the gym. You come up some stairs and then you end up on a mezzanine level and then upstairs again to existing level one and then up to the upper level floor plan. And this is where the... Uh, the meshed or the, the glowing sort of lantern gesture is seen at these two levels. In terms of elevation, this is just showing how um, the attempt was to have a singular um, or dominant um, presence to the street rather than articulating on the facade horizontal banding. We really wanted to not break up the facade in a horizontal way, but uh, accentuate the vertical and conceal that it's three levels in behind the facade. Uh, as much as we could and then in terms of the section uh, this is the existing height and existing uh, structure that we were retaining and just new structure on the front of it so this is the ramp coming up the stairs to that mezzanine area upstairs to existing level one and then up again so this is a photo of the how it sits within the existing fabric so the works by council are actually going to repave all of this up to uh, bluestone to tie in with the entire street and um, how it sits <laughs> next to its existing neighbours that we're hopeful um, by one of the first interventions in the street that it will encourage neighbours to um, redevelop and uh, change their address to this lane as well. So one of the things that we, we found uh, we wanted to do was not just again not the ground plane addressing existing conditions but the entry area to tie in with the existing but when this potentially gets um, torn down and um, worked in it will stand alone on it in its corner position uh, with or without this zone here one minute thank you uh, i'll just move through the the photos showing the existing conditions and how the uh, how it ties in with the existing context and how the mesh um, changes in its translucency through different conditions day and night it can sometimes present more of a solid um, corner and then at other times within an hour will change quite dramatically to be a softer, more translucent um, veil. This is just a view of the west facade. And again, the tunnel experience and the glowing lantern the detail of the tunnel experience and its adjacent proximity to some fairly gritty context and some detailing uh, one of the things with the selection of the mesh is that um, these are openable ventilated windows, but the mesh supports um, anti-fall characteristics. So we didn't need to uh, introduce another balustrade into the facade. We were trying to keep it quite clean and unified. This is that entry zone. Some detailing of the celebration of the handrail. And just a adjacency to some to a, a neighboring condition thank you